readings Laddingtons. That was the Cuddle Princess, who sometimes make baby noises. So now you know who um, who makes them if you um, if you wonder what uh, the sounds are in the background. So anyway, this is my weekly book review, and I read American Karate by Kyle Mitchum, as I showed in uh, the Wild Hunt video. So basically, I have another notebook full of um, little notes I took whilst uh, reading the book. So I found it really interesting, the first part especially when he talks a bit about the um, MacDojo's unrealistic expectations, false sense of securities, etc. The second part is more about, you know, proper technique, etc. Uh, has some Thai boxing here as well, so uh, thumbs up from me. Now, I'm Swedish. Uh, for those of you who are just stumbling upon this video, and this is obviously from an American perspective, so it was so it was interesting to see the differences uh, between the two. I've never really been into karate. I watched, of course, Karate Kid when I was small and thought uh, they were cool, etc. But I never really got into karate. Thai boxing was more um, appealing to me when I came into my teens, and I think Thai boxing might be a bit more ingrained in Swedish culture um, over the last uh, 20 or 30 years or so because you know a lot of Swedes have gone to uh, Thailand for a vacation etc and it's a cool thing to do whereas the United States have a closer tie to Japan because of war and trade etc so I think karate came to America before it came to Sweden and thus have a you know more uh, it's more popular there karate is of course common in Sweden too uh, but I'm just pointing it out there. So basically what I really liked with the book was the um, dismantling of MacDojo's and when I say MacDojo is basically you see a guy who has a club, a martial arts club and he's a black belt and he has, thinks he's uh, really good etc. But then he may be, he's fat etc. He can't post physique and then of course if he can't really translate his skills into action it doesn't really count for much. So uh, yeah, the author here is uh, more focused on the no-nonsense style of karate. So here you can see two karate practitioners, both wearing black belts for some reason. And as you might see, they have absolutely no clue what they are doing. So I'll read a few quotes from the book to uh, yeah explain this a bit better. So first and foremost, in regards to the term self-defense, I quote the author. Many people seem to believe karate styles or martial arts in general are only for self-defense. Martial arts isn't the way of self-defense, it's the art of combat and warfare. Uh, yeah, this is completely correct and uh, again, if we're talking about self-defense, I put self-defense in the title of a recent video. When I say it, it's because it sounds a bit better, it sounds a bit more a bit less aggressive. Same thing if you want to market um, a, martial a martial arts or a club to parents who will put their children in it. You don't want to put extreme violence, you want to put uh, self-defense. But of course, if we're being realistic with ourselves, you need to be able to attack an opponent as well. Imagine if you're seeing a, an old woman being harassed on the street, uh, if you want to step in, yeah, you need to be the aggressor there. You need to come in with some heavy blows or knees or a takedown or whatever it might be. So when we say self-defense, it's quite misleading because martial arts is not about just expecting an opponent to come at you. You also need to take the offensive um, sometimes. So that was a good clarification in the beginning of the book. Then also he talks a bit about the, the staleness of tradition in certain martial arts that you stick to something just for the sake of it. But when MMA came into the scene, you saw what worked and what didn't work. So it can be a good idea now to cut out all of the things that do not really aid you in, um, you know, um, ah, self-defense, if, if we were to use that term. But, you know, street fighting, basically, or MMA fighting or whatever it might be. Um, then also you know, different people, they train for different reasons. Some, they really enjoy the traditional aspects of it because they're interested in Japanese culture or history, etc. And it's completely fine. There is nothing wrong with it at all. Uh, some guys want to compete actively in karate or they want to compete in Taekwondo. But if you're there for self-defense, if you're there for, 
street fighting etc or whatever we shall call it it's important to it's important to distinguish between the different techniques will this work in a predicament or will it not so yeah interesting and important uh, clarifications right there then the author talks a bit about belts you know giving belts to children basically so you see parents coming to pay the tuition for a club they want to see results and the result results are that the child gets a new belt and see like oh now i've trained here and here is my results but doing this gives can give at least a false sense of security if you have a child who can get a junior black belt and then he thinks he's good at defending himself not really the case because he's still a child or if you only know the techniques only theoretical techniques and then you say oh i have this belt or i've trained for this long but you can't really apply it in practice and you think you're really good and then again as i said in um, in my tough guys video then an aggressive boxer comes at you and punches you in the face and you're completely you don't know what happened because you've only trained the theoretical so that's why you know sparring is important so you know what happens if some an object comes to your face in this case a fist or something so you learn how to um, how to deal with it and this of course it's um, something you have to train up so you don't get completely in, in shock when something um, hits you uh, so the false sense of security uh, huge to point to uh, especially if you you know have this sort of belt system I'm not a fan of belts in the least i think you know your uh, your skill is determined in how well you um, you can actually apply it into practice because martial arts etc it is about violence at the end of the day it is uh, theoretical to some degree but at the end of the day it's how well you can fight basically then he also talks a bit about clubs and coaches etc so for example if you lead people will expect to see your abilities it's an unavoidable fact of being a leader of any type. You need not even be a teacher, though all teachers are recognized as leaders. If others see you as a leader, then you are one. Uh, again, in terms of McDojos, etc., you see a guy who's clearly unfit and he isn't really put to the test. Yeah, why should others learn from him? I've competed, I've gone one MMA match, and that was primarily so I had more gravitas in teaching others, because that's ultimately what I wanted to do. I wanted to teach other guys how to better take care of themselves in a rough environment, which we are now in Sweden, for example. So you see, it is good to have that sort of experience. Now, of course, you can be a great coach anyway, but it lends a bit more gravitas if you actually have some... Uh, something to back it up it's the same thing when i make games kitchen videos or training videos yeah you listen to me because i have you know clearly clearly know how to apply it in practice and then also in terms of technique and i touched briefly on this on in my video um and i quote the author here most of these vital strikes don't work why they might work against someone who is standing motionless in class relaxed waiting to be hit they don't work against another fighter who is not going to stand still, much less when you get close to them. Uh, very good point, absolutely correct. You need to, and this is also why sparring is good to do every once in a while, because you know what, hitting pads is great, uh, making techniques, etc., absolutely great, but you also need to be able to get a sense of what it's like to translate it into an actual predicament. Uh, same thing if you're rolling in uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu uh, or grappling Nogi. Uh, absolutely great way to just get a feel, would this work? Does it feel natural to implement this technique in uh, uh, in a situation? So uh, absolutely good, uh, good point as well. Again, he takes issue with these um, sort of nonsense, secret, traditional techniques. So um, yeah, it's a, it's a no-nonsense book. And then the author goes on to talk a bit about teachers, etc. And he quotes, A serious teacher never teaches for money. I've never heard this quote myself, but I'm sure someone might have had. And he takes issue with this, of course, as do I. I'm sure you've heard that one before. Someone teaching for free must have a primary occupation that is not martial arts instruction. 
and how serious can they be when most of their time is spent working for their day job. Uh, this applies to anything in life really. If you want to do something professionally, if you want to do something to the best of your abilities, you need to make money from it. It's commendable if you do it in the beginning. I've certainly coached guys for free in the past, but if you want to do it professionally, you need to charge money, simple as that. Then of course, exceptions exist. Uh, I've coached for free because I know the guys I've coached are the guys who will yeah, probably need those skills if they stand next to me in certain predicaments. Uh, yeah, as I said, we live in Gotham City, multicultural Gotham City, so you never know when it comes in handy. But if we're just talking about this, doing something full time, yeah, you need to make money, simple as that. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with doing that. So next point I wanted to briefly talk about is visualization. He talks about it's good to visualize um, a situation, uh, you know, Conor McGregor talks a lot about this as well. He visualizes everything he does, everything, how he moves in the octagon, how everything will develop. Then you will be more ready. If your mind is ready for something, your body will actually be more ready for it as well. Uh, this is also when I train, you know, only in the gym. I try to visualize the lift, the bench press, for example. And the same thing if I focus more on grappling. If we've done a technique in training, I try to visualize it again to really cement it in my mind. Now another note that is somewhat uh, related here is that if you have a vision in your head you can have an actual physical response to it. So if you think about all the things that are wrong in the world you get angry and you get uh, you know the opposite of relaxed so to speak and then you try to sleep. Uh, not a good combination. So point being if you're on Twitter, it might be good to not scroll through Twitter See a lot of black pills before going to bed because then your body will respond with um, You know a lot of stress hormones, etc. So it's a quick note throwing it out there and then a last note as well is uh, in terms of Stretch predicaments, etc. Situational awareness is uh, huge to uh, you know get out of trouble or uh, you know stay on top of trouble in um, in certain predicaments. So yeah, the book contains more um, gems of wisdom, but I just want to talk about these uh, things. So thank you for watching. XOXO. Boo.